And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer to the temple. A man who a man who does synth shuff a man who does synth things, RPG things, and synth RPG things. Not, not to be confused with propane and propane accessories. And the and the man behind the upcoming Morai Dice, to add a little bit more chaos into your games, as if there wasn't enough already. The one and only Gear Grind. How are you doing today, man? I'm good. How are you? I am do I am doing pretty good. Um it's uh, it's still it's still relatively warm for my t for my taste over here and um I and well anyone who says that you don't that you don't have it that you already have enough dice is a liar. <laughs> yeah, I like to think this way, yeah. Um that's true. Especially since I've played one too many Shadowrun games in in my time, and um, you need D6 for that kind of thing, you need dice by the pound. D sixes till you uh, are basically drowning in them, I guess. Yeah, that was that was the first game where we where we just threw up our hands and said, "Fuck it, we're using we're using a we're using a dice rolling app for this because I'm not having everyone no. lug around that no. many." Hand handfuls of dice must be uh, thrown at the table. It was it was more of a space issue. We were we were running out of room. Yeah, like table space or yeah, table space, especially for me as the as the GM. What what's the what's the kind of number? Like I have the the core rule book here because it was like super cheap where mm -hmm. I'm from. Um, and I bought D sixes to play it, like like one of the, I don't know, like the little plastic cubes that come filled with them. Mm -hmm. uh, who makes them? Chessex, I think, does like a mini D six, uh, little mini D six container, yeah. which I loved. I picked up especially for playing this, but I never got around to do it. Since it's like a really heavy, crunchy game that no one would play with me. Yeah, I can. I can. Cert I um. I seem. I. I seem to have. Be I seem to have better luck than others. Pro probably because, um, of the fact that I've already got a reputation as the guy who forget who's forgotten more about RPGs than some people will remember. So, it's just a case of, look, you lead the way, man. We'll do, and we'll do and we'll do it. Um. Which I ha which I have abused once or twice when I, when I had everybody run paranoia. That's awesome. Like th that game, that game lives off of what you've just described. Like not knowing the rules and like just just being an asshole about the rules in general. Oh, uh, isn't I don't tr I don't try to be one of those evil to be the evil GM stereotype. But um, if the if the game encourages it, who am, who am I to say no? It's so fun though to be an asshole to your players. Like I I sometimes fear. fear uh, like I, I'm sometimes afraid that I that I'm taking it too far that they're gonna be seriously pissed off by me, but like I, I found a home in this in this OSR um, old school gaming niche because it almost always uh, is pleasing to play those games as an a asshole GM mm -hmm. I guess because it comes with the territory I mean like you're you're like these. These little scrawny uh, level zero adventurers, in some cases, uh, getting mauled by like ancient creatures and dank catacombs, and like, there's nothing nice about that. And I think like, as a as a GM, you should be like as impartial as the the cold world. I guess the the characters are yeah traversing. So, I I often like to go into the humble beginnings. In a sense, so with that in mind, what was your what was your first introduction to role playing games? Um, I I have like memories as a child, like in elementary school of like making up um, making up um, 
games that were solely played in like our heads like i would gm like like proto role play with my friends mm -hmm. and do some like some skirmish wargaming with like i don't know like toy so like the little green toy soldiers and like stuff like that but then like the the real deal i think was um advanced dungeons and dragons where i found two boxes like the red boxes from amigo i think there were um at a flea market mm -hmm. and i i begged my mom to buy those even though they were pretty expensive for flea market um uh for flea market stuff but i still have those little um those little brochures those little red brochures of the monster manual and the the player's manual they were like trial trial editions basically they only go to level five i don't know if you know that edition um adv i'm g based on how you d based on how you described it in the whole and the whole trial version i'm guessing that was ad and d first um could be yeah but especially especially since um it's one. It's one of those things that ultimately depends on what on when on um on when it came on when it came out because obviously there were there even within those editions there were diff, there were different um reversions and and the like. That's why when talking about um when talking about like first edition D and D you sometimes you have to qualify. Are we talking B X? Are we talking Moldavir? Are we talking Cook? Are mm -hmm. we talking Beck Me? That that kind of thing. I think it was still TSR. I pulled up a picture and it has TSR, mm -hmm. and at the right bottom it was Amigo, which was probably the German distributors. That's sure. that's certainly that's certainly possible. Um, if it weren't for the language barrier, I'd, I'd um I'd love to tr I'd love to tr I'd love to try and discern what co what caused the whole um the whole relationship with that TSR had in ger had ger in Germany to fa to fall apart. Um, yeah, that's a it. super interesting wrinkle. Like, I got a friend of mine who's a, like even a bigger nerd than I am, and he could, if we could have him on, that would be awesome. Like, yeah. he has like this whole thing. He told me about the the inception of the Dark Eye and mm -hmm. how the falling out between uh, TSR and um, German distributors uh, unfolded. But I'm unfortunately also like. Uh, not well worse than that history. I would I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if it ha if it if it had to do with with depending on what depending on when it happened I wouldn't be surprised if it had to do with if it had to do with Lorraine throwing her weight around. I I don't know who that is. <laughs> um, Lorraine Williams, um, at one point was the head of TSR after the after the Bloom brothers had sold their stock, and. She is not well liked. She She's did... like the Yoko Ono of D and D or something. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> um, well, first off, the, um, it's it's believed by a lot of people that she be, that she um, and I've I've gotten conflicting stories on this. So I'll take it with a grain of salt. But she banned um, game playing on company grounds. What for a, for a game for a game com for a game company and I'll. <laughs> And your your expre your expression is the same one I is the same one I had. That's why certain things like Spelljammer came out without any playtesting and broken as all hell. Fun, but still but still unbalanced. Um, Thank you. there was the whole um, the whole pu the whole push with Buck Rogers in the twenty fifth century, which um, I had I had argued that if that was if that was used as Say a backdoor for a Star Frontiers Second Edition, which was a very underrated game that TSR had. Um, maybe it would have had a chance, but who who the hell is going to know who Buck Rogers was in 1986? <laughs> it was I, I just found out it was Second Edition. Um, okay, okay. I, okay. I'll, I'll I'll send you I'll send you an English um, site that. <laughs> that archives TSR products and it's like web 1.0 
mm-hmm. very 90s looking. And the topmost box was what I got off the flea market. Was like I don't I don't know like yeah. If it was a box set that, that that complete that um then it makes complete sense that it only had the first five levels. That tends to be how a lot of box sets yeah. operate. I still have those dice. They were like really basic red and white um, dice. Mm -hmm. They had a complete set in every box. And so I still have those, um, still have those dice sets and I use them to play and I hold them very dearly. Yeah. Um, it's cer it's certainly a step up from those um, from those cra from those crayon looking dice in the yeah. in the really early days that yeah did that although um, I really want a set of those like I found just found a picture on Reddit while uh, researching this mm -hmm. and they look so beat up and like almost like the the um the ancient uh, Greek dice I posted on my Instagram mm -hmm. like a week ago. I don't know if you've seen them, like little stone D20s with yeah. Greek inscription. They almost look like that. Yeah. Now, when it came, now when it came to Morai dice, um, first off, what um, what was the significance of that of that particular name? Um, I was looking for a name, and I, um, I was originally just gonna call them. Uh, I don't know, like <laughs> weather dice, hit zone dice, and I was like, ah, damn, this is so boring, and I wanted to make it like weird and 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 cat, like I don't know, like when you read it, you it evokes something, mm -hmm. and um, I played this game called Moirai, and it's defunct now, sadly. You can still find uh, find it on Steam and download it, but when you launch it, it says it's uh, no longer operational. And it was a was a weird game that, like, it was a single-player experience that lasted, like, five minutes, and over the course of that game, you were um, put into a position where you either kill someone based on questions they answered, or let them uh, live. And then the game ended after you were asked those same exact questions and you had to type in your answers. And then you got an email um, like in the next couple of days if your character was killed by the next player playing the game. Um, which is genius. Uh, first and foremost, it's like one of the coolest things I've ever seen in like indie weirdo obscure pixely games ever and i looked up what what uh the name meant and it's like the these greek uh i think there's like the moirai are these three fates basically right mm -hmm. and um yeah i i went from there like a group of um chaos goddesses basically like ruling over the world i don't know it's just so evocative to me yeah i can I can and give, given given how well for one fate is capricious and vindictive and two the f the fact that fa the fact that um that the dice are also capricious and vindictive I suppose it, I suppose it fits um but before that were when it came were the were these particular dice setups used on um on charts in your own campaigns um I had I when I like my my love for RPGs was reignited after many years um by um a game by the Questing Beast um Ben Milton I think is his name. Mm -hmm. Do you know him? Um I've n obviously I've never met him but I know of him. Yeah. Yeah, you know of him, yeah. Um called maze rats mm -hmm. which is very heavily based on tables um and i ran a really fun uh, campaign in which everything from the hexes the players were traveling through and the cities they visited and the dungeons they crawled and the inns they slept in were completely um randomly generated at the table using the using the um, tables that um, 
Maze Rats provides to the GM and the players. Mm -hmm. And from there, I just kind of, I don't know, I kept stumbling over it. I played an awesome game called, um, uh, God damn, I'm, <laughs> I'm drawing a plank right now. Uh, in the light of a ghost star. In the light of a ghost star. It's um, relatively obscure. Have you heard of it? I think I remember hearing conversations about it a few here and there on places like yeah. The Forge. Yeah, it's like by the Highland Paranormal Society. And I think I stumbled upon it on a Reddit called One Page RPGs or something. Or OSR. I'm not sure which subreddit. Um I saw it on, but I ran a really fun campaign of that too. And he had an awesome weather table that described the weird weather on the dead planet Earth after the sun had imploded into a white dwarf. And it was like describing like green clouds and it was this, this really wacky um, sci-fi fantasy world. Like it felt like um, the Adventure Time land of ooh to me like this really weird fucking you don't know if it's gonna rain daggers or uh what's gonna happen next and um yeah reaction tables are are also like a staple of these new mini osr rpgs also the black hack had a lot of tables in it and then i i started to draw on blank d6s and yeah the rest is history and to, and to be f to be fair there's um there's plenty there's there's always been a myriad of um interesting cha chaos related charts for um for a lot of OSR games even in my early experiences with OSR yeah but when like it, the originals but based on how you just based on how you described it would it be fair of me to say that the first die that you conceptualized was the weather die um I'm not sure actually which one was the first. I think I did a bunch in one th sitting. Like the ones I I show in the in the Kickstarter video, I made like some weird ones too. I have one enemy type die that I I think I never used. I it's like it's got a humanoid slime. Uh what else like undead or something that I did for like encounters. Um, and I did uh, a whole bunch because I got a, uh, like a bag full of blank D6s and I made a bunch of them at once. But I think you're right in saying that the weather die was like one of the, I, I guess, a no brainer for me because it's like, yeah, you can use it pretty much the most, I guess, out of the dice. And admittedly, I, admittedly, I ended up, um, I end up using that. I end up using that uh, the um, face examples on that die to make a few, um, to make a few really bad, we really bad weather jokes, like saying that the rain, like whenever if the rain one were to were to uh, land, were to land is a case of oh we've got Seattle weather. Um, <laughs> although pers personally, I think, I think when I look at the weather die itself, I'm th I'm thinking if I wanted to make the if I wanted to make the weather results really crazy. Mm -hmm. Don't roll one die, roll two of them, and use both results. <laughs> oh yeah, it's like yeah, th that's an awesome idea actually. So you that so you can have it which, where which it's you, some. What you should do is like buy more of my die sets and like. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, someone pointed out in the comments yesterday that it should have been a d12 for the for the weather. I don't know if you read that comment, but. Um, a guy uh, proposed to have like, I I think four sides for each season or something, which is a fascinating idea. Uh, um, it's, it's a fa it's a fascinating idea, but at the same time, if you're if you're only gonna have four results, why not just use a caltrop? Sorry, D four. Yeah, a caltrop. Yeah. Look, I look, I booby trapped some. I booby trapped somebody's kitchen with a bunch of caltrops once. Okay. With That's... a bunch of D four caltrops. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I just. I, I hope just... they were pointy. They were as pointy as, uh, like my my uh, uh, homemade D fours. They weren't ex they weren't excessively pointy because these ones had gotten some use, but yeah. it was it was just a pound. Uh, I just 
I just dumped a pound of white D4s on on the kit on the kitchen floor, and the kitchen f the kitchen floor tiles are all white, so they they'd blend in easy. <laughs> um, yeah, that's devious. But I but I look at how I when I look at the, I think the, I honest I can see where he's going with that, but I would argue that going with a D6 is is a more natural call because even people who are are um not familiar with role playing games are familiar with a D six. Like yeah, it's, it's for a lot of people. It's, it's the dice. default. I've um for a lot for a lot of games in in certain in certain other areas, it's the main die that you're going to get access to. Like a lot of um a lot of Japanese tabletop games exclusively use D sixes because um non D six die are hard to get. Oh yeah, yeah. And because and because of that, I, given what you mentioned about the land of about the land of Wu and the kind of crazy weather you, that you could have about raining knives or something like that, that's the reason why I'd say, I'd say roll two dice and then you and then use the results so you can have it where it's um where it's a th where it's a thunderstorm but it's also snowing out, or yeah. or it's or it's um or it's or it's cl it's cloudy but it's but it's also sunny at the same time. That's a great idea to roll that that weather die twice and just combine the two. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I never thought of that actually, but that's so cool. Well, I, that you can't. I yeah. I did some I did something like that when it came to a when it came to a setting that I that I had where the uh, I had set it up as a kind of post post apocalypse where the apocalypse had art a fantasy apocalypse had already happened, but it happened centuries ago. It happened centuries ago. Um, Dude, I had that same idea of my fantasy, yeah. high fantasy elf wizard characters yeah. uh, stumbling across an atomic bomb in some dungeon or yeah. something. It wasn't a case of an atomic bomb. It was a case of the 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 world was already destroyed and attempted to reforge its, itself, but occasionally the occasionally these cracks in the seams show up because it was less of a reforging and more of a trying to quilt everything together. And like a hack because, job. Because of that, the the approach that I had is sometimes certain ele certain elemental planes leak in, and this results mm -hmm. in what's known as what's known as spikes, where the what the weather or the landscape might might um sh might shift radically, like you'll have an earthquake and then and then spikes start and then um stone spikes start sh start shooting up in the ground or the or the landscape decides to reshuffle or You've got weather. You've got types of weather where things just don't make sense. Um, That's awesome. That's an awesome idea. Yeah, and it. I mainly did it as a as a means to go, to 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 explain why people would would still be huddled in large cities. It's because those large cities have what amounts to a magical lightning rod, where if that energy shows up, it just goes mm -hmm. just goes right into the rod and and then gets distributed. You know, like a lightning rod hitting a hitting a building. Yeah, isn't that like with um um, fuck, powered of the uh, po powered by the apocalypse? What's the original? Um, apocalypse um, world. Apocalypse, apocalypse world. That's right. Isn't there like the vortex in there? Uh, I or something think where you can. It's been a while since I took since I um took a look at vanilla apocalypse world. Yeah, same same here. I don't even remember the name. Oh. And I think I think that's largely a credit to the fact that a lot of the powered by the apocalypse stuff has kind of out, has kind of outstripped it. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing what uh, what they did with the system. Mm -hmm. I gotta play that more. It's yeah, it's not um, my my usual old schooly type of game, but it does. I think it does what the. I, I'm gonna call it new school, even though that's like ignorant, I guess. But what 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 newer developments in the the RPG world did was was um, put the characters and their relationships more into focus instead of like sword and sorcery bashing orcs heads in with like uh, I don't know swords. Mm -hmm. um, and powered by the apocalypse in apocalypse worlds. did a wonderful job of like putting char the characters that are playing and the players and their relationship among 
uh, amongst themselves into such a focus that I've never seen another system do, I think, mm -hmm. before that and after. Yeah, when, um, now, I will, I will admit when I saw the hit location die, I, um, I had, jo I had jokingly remarked, hey, does, has this guy ever played Rollmaster? <laughs> <laughs> I've never played Rollmaster. I gotta look up Rollmaster. Um. If it if it helps, that system was also used in Middle Earth role playing, which I know oh, yeah. had a little bit more of a had a little bit more of a foothold. Um, Rollmaster started out as as just a hack of AD and D that just got out of hand and became its own thing. Oh, um, so and that's a cool. I, um, yeah, I will I will admit that I that I I did get a chuckle out of the fact that one of the hit location results is on the knee because you know that meme will never <laughs> yeah, die arrow, yeah arrow to the knee that's right and I, I didn't think about that dude that's right it's it's uh an unfortunate ex adventurer that took an arrow to the knee mm -hmm. that that thing was inex uh, inescapable when was that the thing like 2012 or something <laughs> where every every single um comment section in youtube was plagued by this meme Mm -hmm. well, Damn. I, did, well, I did my own I did my own variants when I was when when I was when I was playing other games it's a case of arrow to the knee well I took a missile to the face <laughs> yeah arrow to the knee dude yeah um but e even with even even with that um I've I've had a um I've had an in I've had a unique relationship when it comes to hit location cuz some t sometimes you sometimes you can get interesting results and sometimes you can get results where um where you're tr where you're trying to figure out why would you why would you even aim there um <laughs> yeah it's it's less a case of you aim somewhere and now you roll where you aimed it's just like oh you want to hit the you want to hit the head all right roll for it oh you failed <laughs> you hit your friends and then you roll the hit location die knee um or something I will I will admit it that that hit locations always get a little bit sillier when it comes to melee combat versus ranged combat. That's right, yeah. Um It's not not that it can't be done for for melee. It's just it's just that sometimes the mo the moving parts end up get end up getting a whole a whole lot a whole lot sillier. And yes, I will I will ad I will admit that on at least one occasion, I have used hit locations solely, solely, so so I can so I can chastise somebody for shoot for shooting their enemy in the dick. <laughs> yeah, um, I think the best hit location table is, or my favorite hit location table is to be found in the Black Hack, mm -hmm. um, where it's a drop table. It's like a one page. And it has like an adventurer with outstretched uh, arms and legs on it, and you drop a die on it that is simultaneously the damage die you use for your um, attack, and you drop it on the page, and depending on which limb it lands closest to you, you then go down a table. Um, uh, you look at the damage you roll and to go down the table for that limb and it's super evocative. It's like for the arm, it's like it starts with like um, broken pinky finger or something and then goes gradually up to um, blood spray or something. And it's super evocative. Like you roll a D8 on that table and just somebody's arm gets chopped off and blood sprays over the corridor walls. And it's it like these kind of descriptions have a weight to them if you roll them out as opposed to just coming up with them on the spot because it seems like it really happened in the world because a die said so instead of a guy, I guess. Oh, yeah. And when it came, when it came to something like Rollmaster, they had, um, they had a, they had a much more, co they had a much more complex table, ad admittedly, um, and different tables for different for different types of weapons or means to or means to attack. So one for bladed, one for crushing weapons, one for Damn. one for missile weapons, um, one for one for certain magic effects. And I will show I will show you one 
example of one of the uh, ch uh, one of the charts. This is just for crushing critical strikes. <laughs> God damn that. <laughs> That's the too long didn't read from me, dog. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit, dude! On, it's on a D hundred. <laughs> What's the A B Z uh, A B C D E? Um, that t that ties in that ties into the um t into the type of attack and the, and the role itself, where it'll t determine God, how. Sometimes it'll say it'll have just a set number of hits, i.e., that's how much damage you do. Other times it'll it might say like five E. So you do five damage and then you'd have and then you'd roll on the e column for critical strikes oh oh that's only for crits all right mm -hmm. like um do are you aware of um dungeon crawl classics yes Dun um crit tables yeah i am those are fucking amazing dude mm -hmm. like they're they're so like the 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 one you sent me crush it's just crush uh, yeah. with a K? Crush? Critical. Mm -hmm. huh? Why is it spelled with a K? Am I am I having a stroke? Isn't no, crush you're not. A, you're not having a stroke. <laughs> crush. But why? Um, why not? All right. Yeah, it looks cooler. It looks like uh, '80s uh, metal band. So. Yeah. Um. And. Yeah. G now, what? Plus, there's um. If I could easily, I could easily see the, uh, you know how I mentioned the the um. The whole whole multiple die thing with the weather, you could probably do you could probably do that with with multiple missiles. Like if some like if somebody was getting hit with a with say a shot with a, a shotgun at point blank, you could do, uh, multiple hit locations at once. Oh yeah, you could. Or, you totally could. Yeah. Or or worse, if they they're in the vicinity of something like say a, a nail bomb, which is just, which is just a surgeon's oh, yeah. nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right, which limb? We which limb do we live on? Yeah, it's the case. Okay, okay. Which limb got hit? Yes. <laughs> no. <I'm, laughs> okay, where where did I take damage? Yes. <laughs> um. The main reason I come up with that kind of thing is, um, one of my players a long time ago, for whatever reason, liked make liked making, um, rogues or alchemists for the sole purpose of having a lot of things that can go boom in various ways. Yeah. Like he he would th he would o he would open up encounters by just throwing dozens of bottles of alchemist fire all, all over the place. Maze Rats is awesome with this stuff. They got like a what does the potion do kind of tables. And yeah. if they don't know what the potion does, I mean, I'm going to roll on the table and either you heal the enemy or you blow him up. You don't know. Or you make him bigger or <laughs> open up a portal to like the nether realm. I don't know. Let's find out. Yeah. Also, the I eat. I eat the stuff table from mm -hmm. uh, Into the Odd, which I love to take out my... My brother has made a habit of just eating the stuff in every game we play, just because he wants to find out what happens to him after he does. Shout out to my brother. Mm -hmm. And when it when it comes to when it came, now when it came to the when it came to the Oracle die, um, was was that a means was that a means of tr of trying to put a little bit of chaos into into people who might try and do some sort of divination effects you could totally use it as that yeah i i'm trying to find the site where i stole this idea from um as we speak mm -hmm. um and i never used the 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 um the oracle dice before in a game but I was looking for for um, dice ideas to to um, add to the Moirai roster, um, and stumbled upon this where they they used a table and they used fate dice mm -hmm. um, like uh, like the plus and minus dice yeah. I think, and he had like. 
you throw two of them and then you look at the table and it was like plus minus 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 plus plus minus plus like mm -hmm. it was all the combinations of those two and i thought you could very easily put them on a dice and i see someone else has done this before mm -hmm. uh, uh just now i've never seen those before and um give, given the um Given the phrasing used for the Oracle die, I'm curious. I'm curious if you're familiar at all with the concept of fail forward. I heard of it. Yeah, um, basically like um, using fuck ups to advance the story. I mm -hmm. guess right. Well, there, there's that, and there's also the, there's also the fact that a big tenet of a big tenet of fail forward as I've interpreted it and obvi obviously it's going to be one of those where the interpretation is different from person to person but i've always had the approach that it means that a failed role is not a stop to mm -hmm. the to um narrative momentum mm -hmm. yeah like for a lot uh, for a lot of people it's a case of oh well, you roll the die and it didn't it didn't roll up how it wanted so it's just you fail yeah um, you're fucked you can't open the door yeah next um, yeah, I, I stumbled across that problem with a recent um, uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics um, adventure. I played uh, Sailors on the Starless Sea with uh, with my family, and we had <laughs> there was a moment where my brother looked at me and goes, "Bro, this sucks. <laughs> we we did a lot of things. They all didn't work out. It sucks." I was like, fuck, it does suck. And um, I think Apocalypse Worlds does this uh, exceptionally well. They don't have, they, they have this yes, but, and no, but mechanic built into mm -hmm. the um, gradual um, dice rolls where you have like, yeah, you didn't break open the door, but maybe you put a hole in it if you rolled high enough. Or um, what I, the, the, the greatest work of genius in that system is for me, like the little, little uh i guess tables it's not really tables because you don't roll on them but you have like five things you can pick from and the better your roll is the more you can pick from them like you can break open the door and you can do it silently um and you can take another action or something like that and the inverse effects is uh, also true because if you roll low enough um, there are like some some fuck up tables where you can like uh, mitigate your what the what the GM can do to you once uh, once your action is over. I don't know if that came across clearly. I don't know if you know what I mean. Yeah, I I gotcha. Um, and per personally, I've al I've always been of the mindset that I I have a I have a complicated attitude with pe with with people trying to use scry or div or divination in fantasy games hmm. largely because of the, largely because of the fact that I don't like um I don't like effects that take away narrative control mm -hmm. like from to, from whom from the uh, G from the GM mm. uh, for exa yeah. for example even even in my early days with d and d I banned teleport as a spell that you could actually use. Yeah, because why? Why um, if some if somebody can just teleport right to the dungeon, what's the point of what's the point of setting up the hexes and set and setting up wandering monsters and all that when somebody can just port over there? Yeah, I think the what's he called the great GM or something, oh. um, the South African dude living in Japan. I forgot what his name is. How to be a great GM mm -hmm. or something. A great. GM, I gotta, I gotta know his name here. He's a legend. Although, if we're having trouble, yeah, it's his... just, it's just great GM. Yeah, the YouTube channel is great GM, and he did a great video on exactly that problem, where, um, where he says, no one can take narrative control away from you. You're the GM. You make up the world. So, if um, don't, don't say, um, I guess no, you can't teleport. Um, make it so that there's like complications to teleporting maybe there's like uh maybe they teleport to the dungeon but like the dungeon door has like a field around it where you can't directly teleport it and now they bounce off in like the weird hyperspace teleport dimension and have to like fight their way through there to the dungeon 
or uh, like uh, displaced and don't know where they are. And then you have like a new failing forward, I guess, from the, the side of the GM. I will admit that the approach that I ended up using in, instead after after enough people made a case was, okay, there are these certain waypoints in the world that you can teleport between safely. Any other place, yeah. and it's it's like um it's like yeah. it's like oh it's like being out in the ocean without a cur without a uh, yeah. map. Now we're talking. That's like the stuff I want to see. Cause like, yeah, sure you can you can do the weird teleport thing. See what happens. <laughs> see what happens to your to your teleporting mage. Maybe, um, maybe some parts of him get teleported there or something. I don't know. Yeah. The 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 way i de the way i described it is what is once you're once you're out of once you're out of real space when it comes to teleporting you're in you're in the, you're in a place that's basically like being un being underwater being underwater during a maelstrom and above water during a hurricane at the same time <laughs> that's a good way to put it I'm gonna steal that by the way so it's so it's e it would be easy to get swept up in the currents and end up in some place you had no you had no intention of being. Plus, yeah. I remember um, I remember night I remember Nightcrawler from uh, X Men talking about how he needs to see where he's going, otherwise he uh, he's afraid he's going to teleport into into a uh, rock or something. That's that's like a a, a, a prospect that's uh, should be should be uh, brought up in more games i think like mages teleporting themselves like halfway through walls like but, just being stuck there and i i will i well i've cer i've certainly d i was able to use that once to, as a glorified excuse to to, ha to have a mage do the carbonite face <laughs> um it was it was just mm -hmm. that it was just that they ended up te they, they end up teleporting in and ended up with half of their body sticking out of one wall and half of their body sticking out the other wall. That could be like a cool adventure cue too. Like mm -hmm. if that happens, like okay, we gotta get a pickaxe and get him out of there. Um, <laughs> if he can breathe in there and stuff. Well, in uh, this case, he couldn't. This case, thing. it wasn't a case of um, getting him out of there. It's a case of, yeah, you're yeah, you're not getting your mage back. He's um, <laughs> he's in the wall now. The wall has him. Yeah. Well, that well, that and you'd need to put you need to put together all the pieces. Yeah, I, I read. Um, I think it's the Light Fantastic by Terry Pratchett. Um, a couple of days ago, there was a, a passage which I really loved about um, I don't know seven league boots or something like fast travel shoes essentially, and um, he describes like uh, mages forgetting to to uh, to do the the right spells before using them and that an important part of using these shoes is putting one foot 21 miles before the other uh, <laughs> and i stopped and I'm like what is he saying but what he's saying is like people put one one foot 20 miles before the other foot and just like got ripped apart because they they didn't use the proper i don't know like phasing or stretching uh, spells before using the boots, which I'm totally also gonna steal. Look, if you steal from one guy, it's it's um, it it's plagiarism. If you steal from a dozen guys, it's research. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. There's also like this one, this one quote: "Great artists, great artists copy, and the greatest steal or something." I'm not sure about that. Which sure. kind of feels Man, like something that Banksy would say. <laughs> yeah. Um. And when it com when it comes to now um when it when when it came to the re when it came to the reaction die that one I could see getting a whole getting a whole lot of use and a, yeah. and a good way to um curb the habits of murder hobo players. How so? Um. No, j just when it, when the, you know the, you've probably seen that kind of pl that kind of um, player who who looks at the um, essential NPC and asks, "How much XP for, can I get for taking them out?" <laughs> yeah, to the point where there there is a t sh there is a um 
Uh, unfortunately, I don't have this as a t-shirt yet, but there is a t-shirt. There is a um, t-shirt design called uh, called ascent called essential NPC, which I'm going. I'm going to see if I can di if I can um dick if I can. It's dig got it like up. the stats that you get uh, for killing them on it or something. Oh yeah, essential NPC. The success of this ma of the main quest depends on my continued survival. Do not maim, rob, or kill. NPC is not worth significant XP and does not carry excess <laughs> amounts of cash, unique clothing, or named weapons. Yeah, I, I'm glad that I I um I'm fine with a little uh, murder hoboism. I even welcome it to my games. Um. If it's like done in moderation, not just like psychopath uh, mass murderers ravaging the lands. And if they want to do that, that's fine. Then they're going to play an evil campaign fighting the forces of good or something. I don't know. That's another story in of itself. But I've, I'm very happy that I haven't met the player who's just... Oh, oh, I did. Like in my early days of gaming, I had people like shoot shopkeepers and stuff. Um, but, but I'm very glad that... Uh, these days uh, of playing with people like that are behind me. Mm -hmm. And that's a pain in the ass. <laughs> oh, it oh it definitely is. Um, but I could use I could also see reaction dice being used in um more in more social encounter sort sort of um sessions. Uh, how they're gonna react to an offer or something. How they're gonna react to an offer? How they're get, how they're gonna react to well and well anything? Because I do th I do think that even in more even in more narrativist games, the idea the idea of social combat is um is something that's underutilized. I can only think of a handful of games that have really made an really made an attempt. Mm hmm. Um. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I, I think know Troika. Yeah, Tro Troika is one of them. Um. Exalted's another one, and I know. I know. Whenever I bring this up, people always say, "You'll always say, well, you well, you can just role play that part." Except when I think when I think of like watching a chamber play, which I've taken part of a few in my, in my time, and mm -hmm. the kind of back and forth that you have that you have, but that you have between the participants, mm -hmm. um. How I don't. How is that any different than the kind of back and forth that happens in a in a combat encounter? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's like yeah, it's like combat with words in certain situations. That's true. Yeah, I mean you you especially when especially when you look at the more um the more dr the more dramatic ep epics that have those back and forth that have those back and forth talks or. Hell, if I need to use a more contemporary example, look at it. Look at, say, Phoenix Wright. <laughs> Objection! <laughs> I, I I noticed really late that you can yell this at your DS and it will yell objection in the game. Did you know that? Yes. It's so it's such a, such an awesome Nintendo e feature that you can yell objection at your handheld console. Like sitting at the train, everybody's looking at their phone, and you're like, up oh, fucking objection. You know, <laughs> sustained objection, sustained, Your Honor. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's de yeah it's, that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. It's definitely it's definitely one of the one of those one of those bits of one of those bits of crazy that you're never you're never going to forget. Yeah, that's such a catchy yeah, and I think Troika has, if I remember it right, they have like. Uh, weapons for social combat. You can lug around like this um, fine china tea set in your in your backpack, and then when it comes to like um, haggling with your quest giver, you can take out the fine china and like have um, bonuses on your um, uh, rolls to get more money out of them, which is like this is a super awesome idea. I need to play Troika, man. I I read the book. Um, I love the art. Um, I need to play this game, man. Yeah, with thumb. With what? Tro with thumb. Tro Troika is definitely an, definitely an interesting ki definitely an interesting case. Um, I know some I know some people want to want want to um 
want to try and go try and go simpler. And I, I did a bit of a I did a bit of a rant about this earlier in the week that um, complexity is not the devil. Yeah, I, uh, dude, I when you I, I my the back uh, the the hairs on the back of my neck stood up when you you uh, sent me this uh, crush critical strike table. Like I see this thing, this wall of text, and I'm like not gonna fucking same same with uh the dark eye we we talked about um earlier when we were not recording the yeah. dark dark eye it's hugely crunchy german um rpg system a, a friend of mine convinced me to make a character with it and i was like all right let's let's do it um, i've got nothing to do for the next three hours so might as well do it and he sat me down in front of his PC and he's like this bookkeeping software <laughs> to make a character in like half an hour or something where the all the points you roll up are like they're like organized for you and yeah. you like can put put on like uh, armor pieces like I'm gonna wear one piece of armor on my four left forearm and it's gonna give me two points toward my uh and I'm like, oh Jesus Christ I'm so glad the... there now I mentioned this. Before, I mentioned this to you in the past, but I will. Fr I will freely admit once again that I'm, I'm only familiar with fourth and fifth edition um, Dark Eye. So if it get if it was more crunchy in its earlier days, I can, I um, can't comment on that. Yeah. But from what I, from what I saw from what I saw when I actually looked into it, because obviously, like a, like a lot of people, it was billed to me as the as Germany's answer to D and D. Yeah. But which it probably is. Yeah. What, but when I when I sat down, when I sat down with it, I started to feel that that um that comparison doesn't doesn't really apply as much as much as people think. Hmm. I would I would argue that Dark Eye has, and maybe maybe this is maybe this is um me reading too much into it. Maybe it's a case of the, of this happened totally by accident. But the Dark Guy seems to have far more in common mechanically with things like Riddle of Steel or Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Yeah, I, I've never played the Dark Guy or Riddle of Steel or Fantasy, uh, the the Warhammer Fantasy Role Playing game, mm -hmm. so I can't really comment on that. But I saw that you need to like I played. Um, Oh, I did technically maybe played a little uh, of the Dark Eye, but a solo adventure book, which was gorgeous. Like th those things, like all their material, you can say mm -hmm. what you want about the system, but their material is freaking gorgeous always. And they have like the, these these small solo adventure books, mm -hmm. and I love solo adventures. My last Kickstarter was a old school um, like. Uh, like the Ian Livingstone adventure books. Yeah, you'd um, um you'd probably you'd probably get a kick out of um DC Ross's stuff. DC Ross. Jacob D Jacob DC Ross. DC um. Ross. Um while I looked that up, like I wanted to finish mm -hmm. saying that I saw that you need to roll three dice to do a single thing, like three D twenties. Yeah. For three attributes that are relevant to the task at hand. And I was super turned off by that. Um, I um, I didn't. I honestly didn't. I honestly didn't mind that that setup when I when I saw it. And I th I think it. I think it came down to interpretation because I think the int. It seemed to me that the intent was to do a kind of degree of success thing, although mm -hmm. I can't. Although where I what I can see, a a, a um. A, a potential issue is in is in tr is in trying to is in the temptation of making everybody a bit more of a generalist um, when it comes when it comes to allocation mm -hmm. instead of specializing. But yeah, I mean the the thought of it is really genius. Like mm -hmm. uh, you can you can scale a wall with strength. You can scale a wall with agility. It depends on the wall and like. The, depending which attribute you roll high on, it could be that you, yeah, the, the the outcome could change. Like the idea is is awesome. Yeah, once once again, I th I think it I think it ultimately comes down to the to the fact that I don't I don't believe that you can re that you can really use um you can really use the dark eye as a D as a D and D analog, especially since nah, the dark yeah, eye um, to wise. its cr to its credit. 
has a far more defined setting than D&D has ever had. That's true. Or uh, is that still true though? I don't know if 5th edition has like a It's still it still like has Aventuria. Uh the Dark Eye? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It still has that, yeah. And that's been a criticism I've had with D&D for the longest time that it that it mm. never that I could never figure out whether to shit or get off the pot when it came to a <laughs> default setting and a default style of um fantasy. Yeah, I like to the thing is I don't want a predetermined world. I I what I look for in my favorite systems is like I read the rules mm -hmm. and I get enough out of the rules to start playing. Like not I don't have to read which, any source material if I don't want to. So Which it is perfectly fine. The where I'm getting at with that comp with that issue with D&D is um not is it not knowing whether it wants to be high fantasy, sword and yeah. sorcery, um, lo, um, dark fantasy, low, low, low fantasy, and so on. But at the mm -hmm. same time, there are, at the same time there are these things that would throughout the, throughout the books, and this is not a new problem that would hint at a a assumed campaign setting or assumed campaign style, and you you can't have it both ways. Uh, you. If I look at, say, Into the Odd or Troika, even though those yeah. don't have a defined setting, they have a defined st they have a defined um, style. Yeah, yeah. Although I did, although it, uh, they still lend themselves uh, very um, well to playing it uh, in whichever world you want to play it in, right? To, while while to still an being really evocative with their setting. Yeah, to an to to an extent to an extent with with them but e even even so it's made pretty clear that there are certain gameplay styles that will be e will be easier to ad to adapt into that system than others like that's true if I'm savage worlds is a universal style game but I'm not going to use that to run something very cr I'm not going to use that to run a very simulation st style approach it j it I would have to house rule it to the point where it would become a whole different game entirely. Oh, because of, because it's like actiony and like uh, heroy. I don't know how to put it, but it's like Savage Worlds I is a very, ring off is the a very chandelier. Kind of game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which I which I like, but yeah, you're right. If it's if it's, uh, but but I think DS um, the the Dark Eye. I want to say DSA das Schwarze Auge in German, mm -hmm. because every German just calls it DSA. It's just like that's that's why it reminds me of D and D because like. People say let's play D and D, and they mean pl playing role playing games. And here they just say let's play DSA, and it's like, it's not really. Ru You're right in that it's probably rule wise isn't like an analog to D and D, but like the role it played, no pun intended, in the uh, European um, RPG market, I think, mm -hmm. is like quite literally an answer to D and D with the history of it coming about and stuff. Yeah, as far as I understand it, yeah. But you're right, yeah. It's probably more crunchy and more simulation me simul similar what's the what's the adjective? Simulationist. Simulationist, that's right. Uh, it's more simulationist than than D and D, I think. Mm -hmm. Now With the three dice and stuff. Mm -hmm. Now when it comes now um I know th now you when it comes to the um when it comes to the Morai dice, you're put your um public you said that you're working with um with Q work with um Q workshop on the on the production of them. Yeah. And I'm gu I'm guessing that the um that the die that you've that you've shown on both the Kickstarter and on your Instagram, those were um prototypes. Um you mean the the three D models? Oh those those were th those were three those were three D models. I <laughs> I was I had I had jumped to the assumption that you had already, that you already made like a like a like a, a prototype of the uh, dice. Um, that would have been a little too costly. I I, th I I asked them about prototypes, and they would have been expensive as hell um, for for my for my um, wallet and mm -hmm. uh, the the uh, chances um, at the time I saw for actually getting this thing funded. Which uh, yeah. All, all the backers out there, um, I'm super thankful to everyone backing this and making this um, a reality. But yeah, those are 3D models I uh, whipped up in Blender to have mm -hmm. something to show people. 
and I hope to that the final product's gonna I um is gonna resemble them um to the satisfaction of everyone. Yeah. I I I, I uh, picked the colors from Q Workshops um, available ones, so the colorways should be should be realistic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. I. I will I will admit I did get a bit of a kick out of the descriptions you put in for each of the Kickstarter tiers. <laughs> that's awesome, yeah. Um, Fa uh, yeah, that's awesome. It that's, worked, I guess. <laughs> I I always I always like when when people try and sneak a sneak a little bit of humor into into the pitch. Yeah, I I really tried with this one like I originally was going to just say you get the dice, here are the dice and then I and I looked at it. It was such such a bland thing. And I looked at past campaign. I'm not trying to shit on anyone, but I looked at past um, at similar projects to mine, and I found them to be a little bit dry and um, I don't know, not sexy. I guess I'm not. I don't know how to put it otherwise. But I wanted to make like a really like to make it an experience to have like some I don't know, like an aura of mystique around these dice and like a weird implied backstory kind of thing like mm -hmm. with them being chaos generators and shit yeah it's yeah. great to know that somebody read that and like yeah, got a little joy out of it i well i um i i have an eye i have an eye for detail um <laughs> pro in part, in part, arguably because I, I spend way, I spend way too much time, I spend way too much time reading Sherlock Holmes. Oh yeah, haven't you read them all by now? Like, I've read, I've read enough of them. All right. And, and the and and just look, I read, I read, way, I read way too, way too much shit when I should, when I arguably shouldn't have. Include up to and including an entire library, because somebody was dumb enough to give me a spare set of keys. <laughs> oh, but, that's awesome, dude! But I, now I know that you've got it listed that the um the uh, endpoint for the Kickstarter is going to be February tenth. And as an aside, congratulations on managing to sm to smash the initial goal with plenty of, with plenty of time to spare. But that's awesome. Yeah, I what was are blown you away by that. Yeah, what are you shooting for as far as a release? Win as far as a release window, are you thinking sometime in um, summer? Uh, yeah, I um the production times um yeah it's it's listed as July twenty twenty one um and let's let's look at my calendar here um i gotta watch what i say right now because this is like the i i heard a uh, collective uh flapping as the ears of uh, 240 backers just uh pointed up and as uh i began talking about yeah there should be there should be time enough because these things take a lot of time to make and um I got to get some stuff shipped here and like package it myself and stuff. So yeah, I'm going to have my work cut out for me once, uh, once, uh, February rolls around. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's the reason why I said release window, because I'm well aware that, that these kind of things are, al are always in flux. Yeah. Yeah, I hope to. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm just gonna say that I'm confident to to meet the July deadline at the moment. I don't want to say. Uh, I want to. I don't want to make any promises about getting it out early. And um, yeah, just gonna hope to to get it out there. When I said I am just gonna get it out there, because like last time I did the Dark Path um, mm -hmm. interactive fiction scene. Oh, there was some fucking around with post. Trump fucked with the post office um, over there. COVID fucked with the post office over here. Um, and I didn't plan the the process of like um, postage and shipping of um, 
goods overseas um, enough and when shipping rolled around uh, pe uh, people were getting restless and like is the creator gonna do an up update and while i i greatly appreciate being called the creator online um it was really nerve-wracking for me to have like oh shit oh shit i hope these i hope the post office doesn't mess with my with my packages and yeah I found out some wrinkles in the German post. Um, it's like a deep lore over there where um, you can send documents, but then like, what's a document? Is it, can it be bound? Can it be a bound? Is a book a document? <laughs> I don't know. And then it's like haggling at the post office. Like, I can't ask, can you, can you just fucking send this overseas, please? And then they feel the envelope. One lady felt the envelope. That's a calendar. I can feel the ring binding on the calendar. It's, it's not a fucking calendar, lady. Just, just please. Like, no, you can't. Ah, fuck. And then I put it in an envelope you can't feel through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just such a fuckery. And this time I learned from that. And like, I char I felt bad about charging like uh, the shipping I charge for. But now people are just going to get their stuff. Uh, knock on wood. There you go. Which they did, like like people got their stuff. I'm not <laughs> saying people didn't get their stuff. Hopefully, everyone got their stuff. Um, but with the the shipping uh, price I charged, I can make sure that if something gets lost, I can just send another one or track it or mm -hmm. put it in a nice container. That's not an affront to any postage trolls uh, on this or the other side of the pond. If I take any if I take any solace is the is the fact that post is the fact that um postal trolling seems seems to be a a univer a universal concept. Yeah. Probably oh. they they probably have like these weird creatures like running around. It's magic to me like not, I'm not shitting on, on on any postal workers out there. It's like really magical to me mm -hmm. that the the way they just like you put something in this 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 weird box at the side of the road, and it shows up at someone else's house like a day later. What do they do? Is they're like underground pipes or something? It's super weird to me. Oh, there was one oh, time I got I got sent I got sent a package with nothing in it. <laughs> Just no no sender. No, there no there. I know who the send. I, I knew who the sender was. I'm not going to say who the sender was, but I opened up the package <laughs> and there was nothing, and, and it was completely empty. Okay, that's that's, but they they say they put something in it. Um. No, it it was just it was just a box. <laughs> it was just like <laughs> they sent you a box. Yeah. All right, that's mysterious. Maybe that's my next Kickstarter. It's nothing. I hope I will get nothing shipped to you by the time um, <laughs> this time next year. Get your nothing now. I, um, I don't, I don't know that I could, I could probably, I could probably use that as, a, uh, I could probably, I would say I could use that as a gag, but um, Stanley already beat me to the punch decades ago Hello. with the no prize. Can't hear you, dude. Um, Stanley had already beat, had already beaten me to the punch on that whole thing with the concept of a no prize. You're lagging out on me, man. Oh, oh, god damn try again i guess stan lee doesn't like the no prize either <laughs> um, now i can hear you yeah I don't, I don't know what that was about technology is weird sometimes and maybe i'm not paying the gremlins enough <laughs> uh. but it but it's just it's just one of the, it's just one of those bit one of those bits of cr one of those bits of crazy that can go that can go about but I will definitely look forward to seeing what sort of chaos is born out of it. Out of it, and um, there's there's uh, even though it, even though it's a bit of a long shot, there is a twisted part of me that 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 is con as considered. Why not? Why not? Ha why not have a? Why not have some sort of character creation method that is just nothing but dice? You roll like si you roll like six sets that's of awesome. dice, and then and then that's and then you fill in your character sheet with with nothing that's but that. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Like make it a make the character sheet a drop table, and just throw the dice at the table, and mm -hmm. then like shift them around and put them into boxes. That's an yeah. awesome idea. 
yeah. And gr granted, we've had things like r like random generation for ability scores and the like, but or or things like the life path generator that um that our Telsorian games has with interlock. But I think we can go further in the stupid. <laughs> the stupid, yeah. Um, I mean, character creation is like such a such a divine process. I don't know. There's like I think it was Traveler that got shit on because your character can die during creation. I have but... I have no idea what I have I have no idea why people shit on that. I find I find That's that to be awesome, brilliant. dude. That's awesome, man. And like someone told it to me, that's like that's the stupidest thing. And I looked it up. And the reason for the character dying in during the creation is that you spend um, years of the character's life doing certain activities like adventuring, um, receiving education and stuff. And depending on what you spend those years on, doing dangerous shit to get better fighting scores, I don't know. You, you might you might be like a sixty year old decrepit war veteran by the time your uh, your character is done, or you might be dead. You got to start again. You pushed it too far, man. And that's such an awesome idea to make it a little game, to make it a little role playing game where you play the past life of your um, character that is created while you do it. That's mm -hmm. such an awesome idea. Yeah, but with... there should be more like this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, um, I'm pretty, sh I'm pretty sure there's, there's the, there's the potent, there's the potential for, there's the potential for it, or even, I remember, I remember a game called Fallen Reich tried to do, do this whole idea of having character creation be kind of a micro board game, which that's yeah. one angle, but I think, I think, I think doing it on say, on say a, on say a, um, on a literal grid where you, where the dice move your position on the gr on the grid. Would be an interesting way to do it. Fallen Reich sounds <laughs> sounds weird, man. Are you gonna look at it? Well, Operation Fallen Reich. Yeah, with the subtitle is can, of "Can Evil Be Stopped in Time for Tea?" <laughs> I see the logo. It's like um, it's like the "Keep Calm and Carry On" type yeah. thing with the crown at the top. Mm -hmm. Looks awesome. Yeah, but. That, but that's just, that's just but that's just one possibility to be explored. Um, with that with that kind of thing in mind, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the insanity at play here. <laughs> thank you so much for having me, man. It's, it's it was awesome shooting the shit and like having this opportunity to come on here. Yep. And anytime you see fit to return, even if it's just one glorified shit post, the door is always open. I I would be glad to to come back. This was really fun. We can do this uh, as many times as you like, yeah. man. And as I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. All right. And, and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then. On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>